Um, hello everyone to Eternity's product coordinators call. Um, today are uh, public holidays in many different places um, in Europe, but still kind of a lot of people showed up. So I'm pretty happy and we will give um, our updates today um, about the past week. And also um, I ask everyone here and later also in chat to please also again write a short written update and post this into the uh, into the eternity forum it's forum.eternity.com and um, for the start um, what I'm also doing now every week is I give you a quick um, overview on what has been worked upon in the past week so um, our core development protocol team was uh, uh, active. They spent more than 300 hours on um, uh, working on the on the protocol. We had a lot of um, people and work going into the new um, Alexi SDK. It's uh, 120 hours just in the last uh, uh, five days. I do not count today because obviously it's 12 p.m. Uh, CET and there is still work uh, ongoing all the time. The DevS team has um, spent around 100 hours in improving the, 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 the different developer tools, or ac actually the two main ones, which is the Playground and Forge AE. And um, the Base App team has spent 80 hours, and also the team from um, Dincho, um, which is system reliability engineering, so all the hosting, the CIs, um, has also spent um, around 80 hours. Um, the other SDKs like uh, JavaScript, Python, and um, has all been worked on um, also around 40, 50 hours. And um, we also um, see um, uh, improvement in the documentation hub and some little applications or more or less little applications like the voting application and um, and uh, also work has been done on uh, our website uh, redesign. But I don't go too much into detail here now and I just go through the people which are um, which are here. We are also having people joining um, the meeting from the outside so please speak openly and maybe at the end people can uh, ask questions also within the teams and yeah this is all recorded so please be aware. Um, let's start um, just from top down without any further um, uh, uh, alphabetical order or so. And Martin, please um, give us an update about the um, Playground, Forge AE, and also the State Channel Coffee app that you guys have started. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, what we have done. Uh, this week's uh, this week was uh, first we have um, focus uh, to update and um, our smart contracts libraries and, and examples which are in the repo uh, apps few examples uh, we are uh, trying to keep them up to date with uh, the latest uh, changes and with the new compiler and new best practices. Uh, so yeah, uh, two or three of them uh, are now in pull request, so, and we are uh, updating uh, the rest of them. Uh, also, we are uh, updating all the existing tools like Playground, 4G, Google's, uh, and Contracts app with the latest SDKs uh, to benefit from the, the new compiler and to avoid some issues that we have found uh, lately. Uh, and we are now working on new release of the Forge 2, which will happen uh, probably at uh, at Monday. We are uh, finalizing and polishing some things and testing. Uh, also, uh, we are have, we have fixed some uh, minor issues in the playground and released uh, a new version last week. Uh, this week we will have another one released in uh, testing.playground.com. Uh, also, uh, we were helping the community uh, uh, with the forge shape command because uh, it seems that the, the, the community is using it. And we had really great user from Bogota and uh, Argentina. And we have helped, we have helped him uh, with his uh, struggles. So he's uh, trying to create a course in Eternity Development 101. So something from uh, 
in the decade organization, uh, which seems uh, really nice uh, about the state channels. Uh, we have uh, postponed uh, the release of the state channels application uh, coffee shop demo uh, because we have found some issues uh, and we are now trying to uh, resolve them uh, and we are trying we are waiting for a new version of the base app so because we have the integration in the base app and we're uh, waiting for uh, for new release when the new release is avail available from the base app team with the latest SDK we will uh, continue the work and release it. So uh, yeah, great from from us for the past from the past week. Thank you, thank you, thank you Martin. Um, I think this was also very uh, well said. Um, to one more time see the different dependencies uh, which are happening. So um, there is the base app. Also Stoyan is here representing it, and there are things happening in the SDK which also often include um, breaking changes when we move fast and add new functionality to it and which will which is also always um, causing maintenance uh, like you just described so um, i would like to go from you to um, to andrea andrea i think you're also here to tell us a little bit about the um, overall sdk development um, you are um, uh, mainly managing the javascript python and go uh, sdk teams you're also overlooking everything um, uh, pivo i think is also in contact with you on a regular base as they are currently ramping up the Alexia SDK. Please give us some uh, insights about like the past week of your work and the main um, tasks you have been working on and the, the progress that you have done. Yes, hi, hello. <clears throat> so um, for the last uh, training, last week, weeks, uh, um, like the big thing that we have new is that uh, release of both Python and JavaScript SDK, we that drop support for the uh, bundled uh, um, compiler that comes with the node, and they um, <clears throat> add full support for, for the um, standalone uh, uh, compiler. That is uh, this is an important change that because uh, the upcoming release of Fortuna will drop completely the uh, embedded the uh, compiler, so um, it's important to have this functionality and available switches to the new compiler. Um, in particular, then we have some improvement on the keep alive mechanism for stage and the JavaScript the DK. Um, and of course, uh, we are working also in improving the documentation. It's a very important part of the um, project. It, Relative to uh, Go SDK, we have an also new release that uh, uh, supports naming uh, should be stable. Um, but um, yesterday we discovered some problems, so uh, we will uh, release a new one uh, uh, soon to address the issues. Um, also, uh, in general, for the SDK, we started to remove uh, all the project management issues to the Zen app as uh, uh, agreed with other teams. Um, and also we started to switch to a more managed way to provide change logs and breaking changes for uh, for the development of the SDK using conventional commits and generated change log for that. So this is a, we started the, this sprint. Uh, um, it's not yet, we are not very yet very comfortable with it, so it's a process. So if you see something strange in the change log, it's uh, due to uh, this introduction. But that should really improve the communication along the, the way. Um, for the middleware, also we have now four mm -hmm. in resolution and the contract uh, call data decoding that is implemented in the review for zero that is um, deployed. Um, that is published on the on the on Docker Hub. And what is we said for the upcoming you know what is planned for the next week? We have a um, the big one for Python in, uh, in implement the uh, release the support for state channel uh, and uh, um, in general, for the all the SDKs, we are gonna uh, 
study and see what are the uh, impacts of the generalized account that are going to be released for in Fortuna and whether it was being put in the SDK. Great. I mean, this is... Uh, uh, middleware. Please continue, yes, with the middleware. Uh, for the middleware, we organized also the uh, decoding of the contract called objects. And these is the, are the objects that are um, uh, attached to a contract call that returns some results. Uh, and uh, we are going to try to um, find uh, a process to, to, to make public uh, releases of uh, database dumps for uh, uh, main asset space that uh, can be used to um, start your own middleware instance without uh, uh, replay of the history. And last but not least, we are going to read a new project. It is a library uh, that implements noise protocol uh, in Rust. I believe this should be have like a speed binding, so it could be used in uh, not just in Rust, but also in other languages that uh, uh, support speed bindings, like Python, Go, and you name it. Great. Uh, lots of progress. Also, um, please, because you have mentioned it, that we have, are moving from Waffle to, to ZenHub, and when you put your written update, uh, um, even if it's in bullet points, it would be, I think, uh, interesting for the community to also have some back, like backlinks to the different issues or the, the different PRs that have been made so that you really can uh, follow the progress here or even contribute if you see um, if, if this is your area. and. Um, I will also um, again collect all those different uh, written updates so people can jump in there and see the changes um, because we really want to to teach everyone in the ecosystem to on like at least in a two weeks basis to take a look at those uh, those changes because right now we're still moving quite rapidly fast and people need to adapt when things changing or when new features are getting shipped and I think the SDK is one of the uh, yeah, the things that everyone in the community should always watch. Uh, we have heard this from Martin already, and um, and also um, there are um, uh, dependencies along the whole um, the whole uh, architecture um, of developing blockchain applications. And um, I mean, one major part of this is definitely also um, the wallets and interfaces. So um, I'm not only speaking about the base app anymore, but I'm speaking about wallets. And I would like to um, start with um, our base wallet that we have developed and Stoyan, because I know that uh, lots of things are happened there in the past week. Please Stoyan, give us some insights um, about the wallet development and also um, um, things uh, that, yeah, like you're, you're intensively working on uh, in this week or the past week. Yeah, sure. So uh, our focus has been centered around putting the integration, the loading up, and there's a lot of dependencies to that. Um, it's pretty really different integrations to be able to vote with the uh, it's a, the voting app with the base app. It's to be able to vote with the ledger. Um, Instead of voting app notes, also being able to both with AirGap, which includes um, AirGap as a separate device versus AirGap running on the same device as the base app. So it's uh, three or you could say four different integrations that we're working on. The order of priority, which we're going by, is first signing with the base app because that basically tests the approach of the connection. Uh, the connection is based on the base app running inside the third party app, which is the voting app. Uh, we created a prototype for this earlier in the week, and we're about to merge it for uh, people to be able to uh, basically run it locally and uh, use this approach for timing inside. Um, the voting app's not aware of which method we use to sign. Um, so if we run with the base app, as long as we've done our job correctly, we will be able to sign with the other devices without knowing, uh, or with the other methods without knowing which one. Is being used. Um, so next, we're currently working on 
the ledger and the air gap uh, versions of this. Um, and that's the main priority, obviously, the goal is to get them done by uh, the end of next week. Um, in addition to that, we've noticed a number of things that can be improved. For example, it would make sense to um, to create a live version based up without the UI so it runs faster, but that's a lower priority after the building app is uh, of a integration with it. So we're probably going to work that for the last two days sprint after we finish uh, the integrations. And additionally, from the past sprint, we're uh, still working on moving from internal testing to external testing so we could share the native apps uh, for Android and Google and for Android and iOS. Uh, with the community, uh, there was one dependency there where uh, we needed uh, to resolve something as that with SK team to get the transaction history to work uh, because we want that to be part of the external test. Um, that's I think now resolved, and there's one other thing that is preventing us from doing it. So we're we should now be on track to move uh, from internal to external testing. And uh, that's it. And Perfect. That's Thank you. This is super exciting. So. Native apps are coming, uh, so more and more support for applications that run within the base application, uh, support of signing with a ledger also. So let's say when you send an, a request through an app, like the voting app. And um, I think um, there is really a lot of things um, happening. And uh, thank you for this update, Stoyan. Um, I am next to you, um, who is also working on a um, a browser um, uh, plug-in uh, wallet um, is Milen. And Milen, you already said this morning that you have exciting news, so please uh, go ahead and, and give us your your update. Yeah, hi everyone. So, uh, the last week I was focusing on uh, releasing a initial public beta version of the extension so everyone can test it out and point out issues if there are some. And uh, it was released a few hours ago in GitHub. I will uh, provide links with the update so everyone can try out the extension. Basically, for now, it supports generating wallet, importing uh, private keys, and signing a transaction to the testnet and to the mainnet via the SDK. Um, basically, it allows you to uh, then track uh, the transaction in the Explorer. And uh, uh, the last uh, week, I was uh, I started working on the feature for tipping websites, which will be include, uh, which will be included in the next release. Um, it basically will allow you to tip uh, any website you visit a certain amount of the a tokens, uh, similar to the basic attention token for the web browser. So. This feature will be uh, implemented with uh, smart contract and oracles via uh, confirming the ownership of a website via TXT records in the DNS. So um, yeah, it will be as decentralized as possible. And um, yeah, that's an extremely yeah. extremely nice use case, and I'm I'm really happy. I mean, you I must mention here that you're basically you are a, a one man show uh, team yeah. who is who is building this, and and also people who are watching this from the outside are absolutely welcome to uh, to join and contribute, read the code, review the code, come come in with ideas. Please use the forum. Uh, you are you are there, Milan. People can. Yeah. Um, can get in touch with you and, at any time. So, and this also counts for everyone um, of our team. So, please, if you have specific questions, reach out to us through the forum, and uh, we will find your request and answer to it and invite you to to um, to join uh, this journey. Yeah, thank you very much, Milan. It's super exciting. We are looking because, especially, we are working so much in the back end that sometimes it feels like we don't have enough things to touch. And when we have something um, like interfaces, um, it, it makes it makes a lot of hearts jumping and happy, uh, obviously. So um, I'm also uh, working on um, on like uh, on applications um, is uh, Pivo. Um, Pivo is not only um, uh, working on it itself; he's also managing the 
Alex here, um, um, SDK team and has a crossover role together uh, with some other people here in, in our community and, and uh, is one of our Sophia smart contract experts. So people you have, um, you're always experiencing a lot of things when you use the wallet, when you use the SDK, you are someone who have hosted its own middleware and own um, uh, um, uh, back ends. Uh, so please uh, tell us a little bit about like your past week, the improvements that have been done in the different apps and, and SDKs and, and, and challenges you had. Thank you. Um, let's start off with the work that was done in the Alexi SDK. So we continued um, work on the high level contracts module so that any developer can use uh, any Alexa developer can use the SDK to work in a really simple way with the contract and to integrate it the standalone compiler in this to yeah, uh, support all the new and upcoming uh, Sophia features. Also, we updated the serializations and encoding to use the Erlang module that is provided by the core node as we can reuse it in Elixir from Erlang. We did some minimum P calculation um, features so that um, any developer won't have to calculate or set its P manually. It will, a minimum will get checked or he can override this and pay a higher gas price is if gas price if he wishes. Also, we did start work on like other high level modules, for example, for spam transactions and oracles, so that, that they are usable within like one or two commands that the developer has to integrate to use them in his, let's say, backend. And we did do some work on continuous integration and testing. So every commit will get tested if it, if it works, what the test coverage is, so that we check basically everything that we do in the LXA SDK for it as working and continue working over future updates. Then I also did lots of work with this hybrid voting app. What we did do in the last um, week is we combined uh, the Ethereum and alternative prototypes that we had earlier into one application. So um, if you open the front end, they have MetaMask as an identity provider or wallet service, then you will walk the Ethereum way and can put your votes um, on the Eternity chain using the Ethereum ERC20 or tokens in migration. And if you open the app in the base app um, or in the base app using your ledger or air gap vault wallets, uh, you will be able to vote using your stake on the Eternity mainnet. Also, we started work to adjust the designs to look way nicer because for now it's prototype design and we got some designs from our designer and um, building this in right now. Um, there was work done on the scripts to count and verify the voting process. So these scripts will be open source and everybody can query the Eternity and Ethereum chains to verify that all the votes were counted correctly. And we started work on the multi-sig contract um, that can be used in this process as well. Very and nice. You also things that yeah. popped up for me uh, were a lot of communications with the, uh, LX, uh, with the SDK, JavaScript SDK team to support the new compiler, with the Forge AE team to support the new compiler a few things about compatibility from the base app team, but I guess they were all resolved or are about to be resolved soon. Really nice. You also take an, you also have an eye on uh, some of our juniors who are also actively um, contributing to the core um, uh, core protocol. Can you say a few words to them and what they're working on? And uh, has there been uh, work started? for um, making state channels more usable? So um, there's a few things that um, are happening there. So 
one lecture are all still in university, so they focus a lot of, on their studies in computer science and whatever else. And they started work or they did the first pull request in the last two weeks on the core alternative node to optimize state channel, uh, the state channel protocol and some details about this. And we were discussing building a state channel client. Work has not started on this yet, but we building a team and trying to coordinate everybody to agree on what has to be done and how we want to solve this. So this will be a state channel client that anybody can use in the front end application to handle state channels in a secure and easy way. And um, there are some efforts on building a bonding curve smart contract where we run into some issues with the Sophia language, but yeah, not basic issues with the language, but um, with how complicated some maths functions are to use in blockchain applications as you, for exponential calculations, you need rational numbers and uh, working with those is not very easy on the blockchain and not very guess Active. So we want to find a way to onboard this uh, guy to the call compiler and VM team to discuss directly with the team on how we can improve this and maybe, for example, build a better platform for bonding curve contracts in the future, make them way more cost effective if we support this by default. Very interesting. Thank you very much, people, for this update. Uh, last but not least, I just mentioned in your name that also our drone application, which has been mentioned a couple of times, is basically ready to launch. Uh, we will say more about this soon. Um, I will just go to the next person here in this room um, and, um, and, and dig more into the um, area of our, our core protocol. But also, um, and before I do this, um, I would like you, Dinsho, to say a few words because you lead our team of system reliability engineers, which is basically from um, CIs up to hosting um, the different, uh, from hosting the seed nodes or the nodes, the public APIs um, that the SDKs are using. Uh, I know that also you, um, still Andrea, who is leading the SDK team, is, has still work to do there, but we are slowly um, transitioning most of those things into your team. Maybe you can give us an update about uh, the stuff that was going on on the SRE side um, from you, Dijo. Yeah, hi. Uh, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, we was uh, with uh, limited availability this week and uh, not think much uh, user facing up at the API gateway still operating fine. Uh, we worked on um, adding more uh, RSAWs to our automation related to the uh, releases like uh, automation checks. And actually uh, two for all has been just uh, released uh, during the call and uh, our uh, seed main nodes uh, have been updated and as well as the testnet. Right. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, the development uh, of uh, Debian packaging is still ongoing. I guess uh, in the beginning of May, we'll create the uh, API gateway for the testnet as well as the uh, mainnet gateways uh, running fine so far. And uh, uh, as I mentioned in the previous call, uh, we'll also invest some time to uh, split a bit the uh, monorepo of the infrastructure. Uh, Cool. To make it easier uh, uh, for the uh, team members. Thank you very much, Dinsho. Um, I also want to add here one more sentence that, um, of course, everyone um, here that wants to work with the Eternity protocol can, of course, host their nodes themselves. They can host the middleware themselves and uh, and, and work with this. Uh, what uh, 
the Eternity team uh, or community is trying to provide are some of some public nodes, so it's just easier and quicker um, to start. So you don't have to care too much about um, this part because it's a lot of work and not everyone's profession to do so. Um, is um, going from you, Dincho, to Sergey, who is um, um, coordinating um, the core protocol development. Um, Sergey, please give us an update what has been done in the past uh, past week, and, um, and yeah, so um, please go on. Hey, hi, boys and girls. So uh, we're still working like in the similar areas that it, we were doing in last week. So it's uh, the major recall of our VM generalized account, the state channels, implementation of Stratum protocol. So uh, each, uh, so a few words on each of the of, of that. So regarding the work on the VM, like we are pretty close to finalizing it, but we made a decision last week that we don't feel ourselves comfortable to releasing such major update uh, in the, with the next work, which is actually coming pretty soon. So it will, it will probably take us one extra month to test and to make sure that everything working properly. So right now we are aiming on the, on updating the VM in the work which follows after this one. So which approximately is scheduled for September. Uh, one of the reasons why we did it, why it happened, is we dedicated some resources to implement digitalized accounts, which is a pretty interesting feature, which allows you a very, like, allows you quite a flexibility in define in the way how you define your account. It allows you to use different uh, sig signature, different curves in the same blockchain in the same protocol, which I think is really awesome. Then on the Stratum front. Uh, we plan to start merging it, it pretty soon, so it's mostly developer complete. So now the next stage steps are testing, testing on the test net, and making sure that everything works correctly. And state channels, well, state channels is a never-ending story, of course, because the topic is extremely complex, and there we are still working on the uh, finalizing the implementation of the solo clause, which I must say took us took us took us much more time than expected, but this is how it is because there is no other papers, there is no other project where we could check for the solution because we are the first, basically, we are on the front running edge in the state channel area. And I think this is it. And yes, right now, okay, our SRE engineers like Dincha is busy rolling out the next release, 240, it's a maintenance release, which will include some improvements to that mempool and also we also finalized our transaction monitoring uh, feature which will allow us to, to, to start monitoring the behavior of the transactions in the different geographical areas uh, so that we have a very good idea of, of how our consensus working what are the confirmation types what are the forks especially so that we can experience what our users are experiencing and I think it's also going to was merged. The feature was merged yesterday, so we will be ready to start deploying this infrastructure. Great. So, and yes, and one last thing. I think we are on the final mile to our of our to our Fortuna release. So I think our schedule next week is another maintenance release. Then pretty soon the next step is freeze on the consensus and freeze on the API, and then. Uh, a hard fork, and of course, the most important question we need a name for the next one. <laughs> Creative, <laughs> very good. Yes, call, call, uh, call out for names uh, for the next release. Yeah. That is really nice. Yeah, Thank you, Sergey. Roman died, Roman got it so far. Very <laughs> good. Thank you very much, Sergey. I also want to add here so, um, we have uh, um, like everyone in who is hands on uh, working in the, in the product development is also. Um, logging their times. It is uh, for us interesting and also I think for the community interesting to see um, where we put our efforts uh, into. And just to give you an, a little example for the core development just of last week, uh, we could say that around 40% of the time went into maintenance and testing. 
This is extremely important to ensure that the whole protocol is reliable and without, uh, without security issues. And the rest of the 60% of the work, um, um, maybe 10% of the work is managing. So 50% is already gone. And the rest 50% of the work is kind of equally split in between state channels, uh, stratum, generalized accounts, and fate uh, virtual machine. Um, yeah, just to give you an impression um, about um, how we work. Um, uh, to wrap this up, um, I would like to give the word to um, Pega. She is taking care of the documentation hub, collecting and writing documentation from all the different areas. Um, uh, it starts in the protocol, it uh, goes through the SDKs and ends up really with uh, hands-on tutorials for the different um, uh, for for example, Forge or um, just making a simple app. I know that you have had also um, a meeting with Pivo uh, where you kind of uh, have written a basic naming application from scratch to um, uh, to understand the process better that, uh, that, that the developer goes if they first time touching eternity and to optimize the, um, the stuff in the documentation hub accordingly. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit in what errors uh, did you run and um, how the documentation hub is improving and um, uh, yeah, and especially also what you have been hands on in the past week. Um, hello everyone. Um, I don't start the camera just because um, our internet at home is not that well <laughs> and um, so I keep on just uh, working on uh, sound. So um, yeah, as you have already mentioned, and I kept on working on the name registration app um, and um, during the process I investigated some issues for example for, with the middleware which was like down and had, had to be resetted and if you want I can show you right now the progress um, what is working currently and what is not um, so I hope you can one second, please. Um, so, um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, so, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is it for now. And um, as you can see, um, it can show the already. Uh, one second. Maybe I have to restart it again. Um, so, okay, it shows already the um, sh um, re already registered names. Yesterday I ran into the problem that um, the middleware was down and I had um, to reuse another hosted um, middleware like um, from, from Pivo, which is working now um, fine, but still um, registering app uh, like names, uh, for example, I, like a test or something. It gives still like um, thoughts. Um, I'm still investigating the problem. Um, it has, I think, something to do with the test that I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I just wanted to um, show you currently um, the status. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, and this is basically also influencing how you uh, structure the documentation hub. Maybe you can give us a quick, uh, a quick view on the documentation hub itself. Uh, when yeah, but can, can yes. I, um, I'm still not finished because I, this week, um, I, it's something that you maybe don't know. Um, this week I've been wor mainly working on the structure and content for the um, upcoming Eternity Sophia tour in collaboration with the DevSeo team. Because we started a collaboration, um, we we are all, all working on um, uh, start making a tool in, in the future and the playground for um, people who are just get started with eternity. So um, this is um, um, the goal was um, to prepare it for the sprint meeting, which was on Wednesday, and I presented my first draft, and there was no um, um, no concern. So I keep on working on that. So I can show you these are the modules that I was thinking of. It's not a not there's no order specifically. It's like the um, the vision is that the people like um, the developer can just click on every module and every module has its own let's say journey. So the journey will be and I'm preparing this and um, what is I made a lot of research for other 
um, functional um, languages, but also like in solidity and um, got like inspired or like things that I would have been made it in a better way, like some orders makes more sense to make it in a different way. So um, basically I um, created like introduction to Sophia and it's still I'm working on it, introduction to functional programming, what is important and also blockchain basics and all, also like in the future the tools where it has to be explained. And yeah, this is like basically it, what I was working on this week, but um, of course I will keep on working um, on the documentation. I do it always. Um, in the um, 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 by the side, like yeah, this is like basically it. I also um, because right now in the dev.apps.com we have everything under tutorials, and I thought um, this is maybe not um, not the right way because sometimes tutorials. The goal of the tutorial is um, le um, to learn something. The the goal, the end goal, is to get a learning. But for me, like some people just want to know um, their goal oriented. They just want to know how to get things run. And that's why I am um, separated in tutorials, where it's really like the main focus on learning something and the how to guide, how to create an account, for example, or how to run your own middleware, or for minor, how like run the CPU minor, and so on and so on. Yeah, so. Thank you very much. Basically it. Yeah. And I would also like to ask um, everyone here in, this, uh, in the team of product coordinators, everyone in your team, because this is only, uh, uh, an, uh, you are only the people who are basically um, coordinating it a little bit. And, um, and, and overall, uh, there are many, many hands on um, improving the eternity ecosystem, product ecosystem, and things are changing and things are getting added. So when this happens, please also do an inbound call to Pega, tell her, let her know about the changes so the documentation hub stays up to date and gets updated. The same counts for all community members who are not in those calls, but who are using those tools or who are running into issues. Please reach out, um, write a forum post, even if it's just very small um, things that you want, that you could not find or want to get updated. Um, we will be, uh, it will help us a lot to, um, to bring this to the next level. Um, yeah, this call has been uh, um, nearly 45 minutes. Um, there, I'm, I'm super happy that all you, that everybody showed up. Um, we actually got an update to every single um, um, major uh, product team. And um, um, I, I would close this meeting um, um, with this and uh, thank you all for joining. And um, uh, please don't forget to also publish a written update into the Eternity Forum, each product coordinator, each team um, in the next couple of days. Thank you very much and talk to you very soon. Happy Easter. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Happy Bye. Easter. Bye. Cheers. Bye.